Ladies and gentlemen, um, I actually want to brief you on the outcome of our visit and client today, William Dumas and Lamley Canal. As you are aware, we were there on Thursday last week with our partner, our partner from the US, his level of the from the US to the US friend. And then um, we were unable to see him last week Thursday. They told us that um, someone who's supposed to receive us was a special assignment and so we can't see him. So we left and um, very disappointed. Very disappointed, and um, today we went back to date uh, because the Mondays and Thursdays are visiting days. We went back today, and um, unfortunately, his, his friend was not allowed to visit him. I was only permitted to see him. So, but I insisted on knowing the reason why he was um, denied access to him today. They, we are, they were kind of vague in their reasons. They told me that, um, first of all, there was a directive from the on the top, that he cannot be allowed us. There was no approval for him to join me in the visit. Two, that um, on further inquiries, they told me that um, he is coming from a foreign jurisdiction as such. It, the laws, the order of the court that allows lawyers to see him was not extended to cover him. So, as such, they can't be part of the team. So, that's actually what I took home from what they told me. I saw him, and um, unfortunately, wasn't even aware that we are there on Thursday. Uh, because he expected to see us on Thursday in line with the guideline of the court. But he did see us. It was not the way that we came in the first place. Saw so him with um, Stavo. Uh, it's fairly conviction. It's conviction. Uh, so, and we discussed other engagements regarding the level undertakings and also uh, things we had to do. So, what um, uh, who's plan is here is going to also address the people on his um, on his experience in Nigeria before leaving and also his next land faction and also how he feel about the entire thing that happened today. Uh, we believe um, something must have uh, led to it and we believe that um, there was victory at the end of the day because I believe something is going on somewhere and uh, the, I cannot be far from now to be out. So let the friend, Mr. Tiffany, can, can talk to the world about your experience in Nigeria, uh, how you were denied access today to see a client you came out with from the US to see, well, yeah. and also what um, you think is good going forward. Thank yes, you. well, thank you for that introduction. Let me first uh, pay my respects from the United States uh, uh, to the Nigerian people who I think all deserve a rule of law and opportunity to develop their faculties and pursue their ambitions. That's a, a fundamental human right and uh, Nigerians like all other peoples enjoy those rights and I just want to voice my gratitude that we have people in this room and otherwise who are risking a lot in order to achieve that element of human dignity. Based upon uh, today's meeting that Ijefor had with Mazinandi Kanu, I am his international lawyer and international spokesperson. And I will be pursuing all international diplomatic and political platforms uh, to see that justice is done, that fundamental norms of law are complied with. Uh, among other institutions I plan to visit, there's an international working group on arbitrary detention that sits in Geneva. It's an arm of the United Nations Human Rights Council. There's the International Court of Justice, the International Criminal Court that entertains accusations of crimes against humanity, uh, violating the Genocide Convention. There's also the United Nations Security Council, which you may recall has established separate courts in instances where it's thought necessary because domestic courts are insufficient to prosecute cases of genocide or crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. The special court established to try Serbian leader 
Slobodan Milosevic for genocide, amongst other Serbs relating to the Serbian war. Uh, we will also be approaching the United States Congress, which obviously has an interest in Nigeria. It's the most populous and perhaps the wealthiest country potentially in all of Africa. Uh, and it will be of major concern of the Congress of the United States that there be stable rule of law here. Uh, democracy can flourish and that religious tolerance is accepted. You know that recently it was recommended that uh, Nigeria be placed on the highest tier of concern by the International Commission on International Religious Freedom because of the seeming persecution of those of Christian affiliation, which includes a large majority of the Africans. So we intend to pursue all of these legitimate platforms in the international community to make it clear that anything that transpires regarding the Nandi Kano case will be fully in the sunshine. It will not be clouded. As an example of the concerns that have been raised in the proceedings so far, there are at least four violations of international law uh, that are apparent. Uh, first, Nandi Kano's kidnapping is a violation of international law. His torture before returning to Nigeria is a violation of international law. His extraordinary rendition that is taken from Kenya to Nigeria without any hearing is a violation of international law. Uh, denying him access to his counsel is a violation of international law. These principles are called in legal terminology just covens. That means they're principles of law that apply everywhere. No state can renounce them because they're so universally recognized as fundamental to civilization. So that's why this case has uh, raised grave concerns under international standards. And I think the international community would be seriously grieved if these weren't remedied, which is why I will be approaching them again with the full backing, I am the basic, the echo chamber, if you will, of Namdi Kanu. I am optimistic that he will be released soon. Thank you so much. Um, that's essential, and I believe Nigeria will come to understand that to be in compliance with international law of the most fundamental sort uh, is a lot better for all the Nigerians, including the government of Nigeria, uh, than being a scoffer. So that's a summary of, of where we are. I'm leaving tomorrow uh, back to the United States and the agenda will be pursued there. Thank you. Yeah, I no. 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 What is the, the state of the health of your clients today? How, when you met with them at the uh, facility, what is the state of his health and his general well-being? No, I was not able to see him. They, maybe they, we are, came late when I started them. When I was there. We were talking. He, they didn't allow him to see come in. They didn't clear him according to what I said. He told me there was a directive. Um, there was an approval for, his, uh, for our request for him to see him. So, but usually before the visit, we usually notify them about that coming formally. And so, as I said, I would approve them. And when I insisted to know more, they said um, that uh, the lawyer called to Nigeria, you know, the other part, somebody in the position, he came here on the way from the foreign country, and she approached the court to get further approval to the Fed. I understand that that should be a flimsy excuse, uh, that's not the point. Uh, you know the point I'm thinking. And then, uh, though, of course, you know, we have other, uh, other applications pending before the courts for, uh, for him, for a medical advanced medical attention to give it to him, uh, which I believe any time is hard the court to deliver during on the merit in that respect. So um, the fact that he's being kept in a solitary confinement is then of course of course you know mental wise. And uh, uh, of course you see the guy came all the way from the United States and uh, spent 18 hours airborne to to see his client. He was uh, eventually not allowed to see him. So, and then, 
uh, you know what it means. So, and also, he's being subjected to that form of torture, where he has no access to the larger world, uh, limited access to his wires. So, uh, yeah. and also, there is need for advanced medical attention to be given to him. Uh, we insist because uh, we can't tell the world actually whether he is healthy today or not. He may look healthy, of course, you know, you see him, you say he's healthy, maybe look, maybe he'll look healthy as he's looking at him. But inwardly, he can't determine what uh, what he's passing through. Uh, and uh, uh, apart from again, the fact of the fact that he was uh, subjected to all forms of torture and uh, uh, inhuman treatment when he was adopted in Kenya before his uh, traditional rendition to Nigeria. So that's why we are calling, and also we are calling on for an advanced medical attention to for by independent medical experts. So that application is before the court, so because the court has to give an order. So and also, if if it be, I've listened to the to the service. I will let a formal application to them that they are, if they are allowed us, because you see, it's only living that can face the death and can face trial. So they can allow us for somebody to come and look at him. Uh, so and conduct a thorough medical examination. Let us know if there's any issue. He has maybe hasn't been disclosed. So as it stands today, I can confirm to the world that he's hundred percent healthy until when an independent person investigates him medical wise. So taking into account the fact that he was was tortured, was also inflicted with severe injuries and harms when he was adopted in Kenya. So and which I believe is still uh, which is still taking treatment today on account of that. Uh, the, the official looking is not an independent medical expert is on my head. So thank you so much. So please, okay. so uh, just, uh, yeah, distracting. Uh, just a simple question. Uh, 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 my question uh, is, uh, uh, you, are, you have disclosed uh, your plan to go to the ICC, uh, US Congress and others. Uh, I'm going to join Kenya that allegedly played a major role in the abortion of the uh, American. I'm going to... Uh, no, no, let me correct an impression, please. Uh, uh, the, 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 if you are asking questions, don't talk about allegedly here. Okay. We are talking about something clear and direct. As a matter of fact, so, 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 when Kenya can come in, when Kenya come today challenging what they did. So what I'm going to say is that abduction, torture in Kenya is acceptable. You can now respond to the question. So don't say allegedly. Okay, please, sir. Please, the, the Kenya, I mean that Kenya... Oh, oh, China sure? embassy in Nigeria. They stop talking now. They, they can't talk they, again. They, 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 oh, they, they deny that. Uh, but that, okay. that. So I want to know if you are going to join Kenya as party in that uh, your plan to go higher. Well, to the extent that Kenya was complicit in acting right. in collusion, they are co-conspirators and equally liable under international law. They can't wipe their hands like Pontius Pilate and say, well, we had nothing to do with it. Um, and the standard we will use, uh, it may well be that, uh, is often done, uh, we would approach Kenya and say, if you give us evidence, you know, we may refrain from naming you. That's often done. They would turn and benefit us as a witness uh, because we know, you know the chief culprit here, the moving factor is Nigeria. Kenya wouldn't have done this spontaneously on its own. So the, the way in which uh, Kenya becomes implicated will depend mm -hmm. on how cooperative they are. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to know is, what happens if all um, sources or all this um, international courts and, and all of that, what if they fail to help you get justice? What else will you do? Uh, there are both a judicial uh, platforms as well as political platforms, the political being uh, Congress. Uh, the fact is we will never cease seeking justice. Um, there's a saying from one of our famous mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson, that, that God is just and his justice will not sleep forever. So the idea that anyone could convince us that we've lost is fallacious. Uh, different personalities come in, justices don't survive forever, politics changes. We'll continue to make the case for justice because it's universal. And we are basing our legal theories on such fundamental principles of human rights 
that no nation can opt out of them. Now, there may be situations where imposing sanctions doesn't, in the short run, uh, yield the result that you want, but you don't give up ever. Look at all of the years it was thought that apartheid would be integral in South Africa. Nelson Mandela was in prison for a long time, but then he became president. So we feel that we have the tenacity and doggedness and justice on the that will enable us to prevail. It's just a matter of when, not if. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I actually want to brief you on the outcome of our visit and plan to the Green Dumas in Lambic Canal. As you are aware, we were there on Thursday last week with our partner from the US.